and uh, insider threat briefing, you know, even though the FSO brought you into this security clearance system awarded that award you your security clearance and perform the high level training, there's still much more to do to ensure that this cleared employee, whether it's you or somebody else, understands how to perform on the classified contracts. So this high level training and onboarding uh, is enough to get you authorized to prepare for the work. Now the rest of the preparation will come from sources to include peers, supervisors, program managers, and more. So this is more of the informal training provided on the job as you actually begin performing on this classified contract. So, you know, here's how it might play out from the top to the bottom. The government contracting agency or, or program office flows down the classified work to the clear defense contractor. And so part of the contract is the security con uh, the contract security classification specification. Again, that's a T DD form 254. Now, according to the information on the, this website, the DAMI website, is the purpose of the 254 is to convey security requirements, classification guidance, and provide handling instructions or procedures for classified material received and or generated on a classified contract. That sounds a lot like derivative classification, right? So this DD Form 254 provides direct information to complete the training that you need to perform your job well and protect that classified information while you're performing it. Again, you do not want to be that person that does not understand how to do their job and puts classified information at risk. We want to keep those types of reports out of the news. Um, we don't want this to accidentally happen. And we also want you to be able to recognize when the cleared employee is an insider threat. You know, if keep in mind, um, we have Eric Snowden, we have Reality Winner and Chelsea Manning. Uh, you know, those are the most recent news stories. We also have Bobby Hansen, John Walker, all these people who were authorized to have classified information, but they, were able to acquire it in an unauthorized manner, take it out of the classified holding and share it with bad guys, with the world, with unauthorized persons, with the Russians, what have you. This information got out. So we, they all had telltale signs. So this training and everything that you are learning on the job as a cleared employee is to prevent you yourself from doing it and for recognizing when this stuff is at risk from cleared employees performing bad things or the insider threat. All right, so while the DD Form 254 explains the classification level and the level that you'll be working on, you know, it's important to understand that this level will be the same level or lower than the security clearance level that you are authorized. So like if you have a top secret security clearance, you'll be working with top secret information, secret and confidential. However, if you only have a secret security clearance, you will not be working with top secret information, but you may be working with confidential as well. Um, so the form may also state, and this is the DD form 254, that you may, that any additional classification concerns such as foreign government involvement or foreign government information, communication security requirements and more. These like SAP programs or SCIFs that are necessary, um, those will be spelled out on 254. Now the form also de um, determines where the classified work will be performed. So there are possessing facilities and non-possessing clear defense contractor facilities. Possessing means that the classified work can be stored and performed at the clear defense contractor location. But there are many clear defense contractors that put employees sitting with other customer sites. And so the classified um, work will not be conducted there at the clear defense contractor facility. It'll be conducted offsite. And so that will be covered in that DD form 254. Um, now, while the FSO will be providing the training reflective of the NISPOM, supervisors may give more direct, more info specific training concerning the technical documents that you'll be working with, how to actually perform your work. So while the um, security manager or the FSO is managing the classified holdings and the security clearances, 
the supervisors and the program people working on the classified contract. We'll be providing more of the how-to and how to protect the classified information while you're doing your actual job. Um, they'll teach you about marking, assembling, storing, protecting, and interaction, and even disposition of classified work projects. So in summary, after the FSO concludes all this training that we talked about, um, supervisors and sponsors may guide you through more in-depth um, contract-specific security training. And this time they'll emphasize your contract-specific performance. And so that, that's our podcast for today. And I'd like to thank you for joining. I know there are many other podcasts out there and I know there are many other more interesting topics. But look, you know, I'm here to provide education on how to become a clear defense contractor, how to bid on classified contracts, and how to perform and protect unclassified contracts and protect classified information. And I appreciate it if you would visit um, uh, my website, redbikepublishing.com, or look for my books on amazon.com. 